Hello, my name is James Bailey. I work for FIS. I've been working for here for six years and I started a journey in developing a cloud platform using ServiceNow and Ansible Tower and Terraform back in November. We st I started on this journey looking for an infrastructure as code solution that our development teams and also our everyday project managers can use. So we decided that we had, we'd have to have two entry points, one which is ServiceNow for our project managers and one which is Terraform for our advanced users who want to be able to use the everyday up and coming features that get released for cloud platforms. As well as that, we want to get rid of all of the ITIL processes as a manual action that we can. So change control, requests, CI management, all of that we wanted to integrate so that when you speak to your colleague, you will ever turn around and say, do you remember how to raise a change control? As I said, our goal is to use ServiceNow as our portal front end, Terraform for all our git commit up ingestions, ensuring that we do all of the ITIL process so that we are in line with ServiceNow service management requests, and also to make sure that every VM or instance, whichever way you're used to, it complies with the FIS standards. So we make sure that we have IPAM in integrated with it, capacity management, in our case it's Densify, they've got big fix agents, Flexera, it just carries on and on and on. But typically this is done by hand and things get missed, things aren't verified, so we want to make sure that every environment, whether it be our private cloud, which we're working on, but in future our public cloud, also get the same treatment, that whenever you deploy a VM, you have to do it the FIS way, you don't do it like the Wild West, which I'm sure many companies are used to. So our initial functions that we are releasing this year into FIS are then be able to create a new VM, a new instance, so that people can go to the portal and request a Windows or a Linux virtual machine, specify the size, and essentially click and get a VM in 15 minutes. At the moment, within FIS, it takes 11 weeks in parts of the network which can obviously is a dramatic change. As well as that, we're allowing the people to be able to update via the ServiceNow portals as well. So you've already got an existing VM, you want to be able to update it to a larger size, you can do so using this same platform. One of the things which, honestly, a couple of months ago was a pipe dream of mine, that was the ability to import an instance. I did quite a bit of research and found that, yes, this is coming down the line. HashiCorp are working on it, but it wasn't ready for us. So we've gone and created it ourselves for VMware. So we can now go and a user can go to the service now, click a button and it will go off, find that VM and turn it into Terraform code for us. So we can allow users to be able to manage their old VMs wherever they are However, they old they're old they are rail six two, windows two thousand and three two thousand and eight it doesn't matter we can manage those using terraform and we don't care it just gets ingested into the code which already exists and we're there that's the detail of what we're we're do, doing what I'm going to do now is show you some demos of the work and how we've been able to do that how we've joined up service now all the way through to terraform using the power of Ansible Tower and to be able to keep to the core strength, core beliefs of Terraform Enterprise and to be able to use it as infrastructure as code. And now I'm going to show you the demo of our import function. It's, this was actually recorded by a colleague called Gavin who's been working on the coding part of this for me. You can see our portal that's been created within ServiceNow. He's going to click on import legacy virtual machine and to then is going to fill in the relevant information. Within ServiceNow, we've created a, an account system to allow cross-charging, and he's going to pick out the support group within that that budget that's going to uh, be allowed to manage that group, that object within ServiceNow, and fill in the information, and then send it to go and record to import it. This request is now created in ServiceNow, and a proprietary function within Ansible Tower is now going to sit there and wait for that request to be raised. 
and then start running through functions to be a uh, job templates to be able to make sure everything within the ITIL process is completed and then to be able to import those that instance into the Git repo. So what it's going to do is it's going to actually create the Git repo for us because this budget doesn't actually have anything. You can see he's going to refresh it and we'll have a brand new Git repo with nothing in there. This works the same with an existing Git repo. It's going to pull down the a state file and allow the, it to be checked and updated as well. And you can see it's currently going through all the actions which are in the playbook to make sure that everything is being um, imported correctly. It's created, it's now interrogated the VM on VMware using the Ansible modules. It's converted that all into our ter a module file, which we've created to be able to standardize the way we create VMs. As you can see, this TFR has only variables in it and it uses a module that we've created within Terraform Enterprise to be able to standardize that. That module includes IPAM, capacity management, creation of the VM, then it will do um, the CMDB actions, and then also after that, it will do the um, configuration of the agents. So at the moment, it's gone through the policies to check to make sure that we protect any VMs that already exist. We want to make sure that when you import a VM that we do not potentially break a VM that already exists out there. This is the key thing for us. So we've got that action in, in Sentinel and then it will go and import it. In this case, it's now done the import into Terraform Enterprise and it's actually importing it into the CMDB. And now Gavin is going into the CMDB to look for that CI and as you can see, he's successfully found it and it has the relevant information that we are currently populating. It's not very much, but this is still a development phase product and we are working with our service management partners to be able to make sure we have all the information and all the links within all applications. It's now checking whether the process is finished inside the workspace. It continuously loops around to make sure that it's ready. Once it's finished, it will go back. Oh, it's doing it. Uh, that's why he did two. You know, he did two in a two app, two VMs, and this is now doing the second one because within this feature, they allow them to be able to loop around and do two. VMs in one go, and once this VM has been in, imported, it will report back using IT3, which is the function that we've built onto Ansible Tower, to push it back in to service now to confirm that this request has been completely completed successfully. And as you can see, it's doing the CI CMDB import. The other thing which this currently uses is Terraf within Terraform, we've created a Ansible Tower provider, which allows us to be able to use um, Ansible Tower as a forwards and backwards action, post action task. So for example, when we would come to deploy a domain controller, we can actually do a build a domain controller and destroy a domain controller using the Terraform plan because we are going to be use, we use Tower to be able to do the post action tasks without the risk of destroying our domain. And as you can see, the, the request has been closed complete by IT3 as everything has been imported. And now I'm going to go through the upgrade instance. The upgrade is to allow us to be able to update one of those VMs that we've imported into Terraform to have extra disk or an extra memory as well. 
from what it currently already has. As you can see on the video, you've got the, one of the VMs we've already just imported, showing it's got two CPUs and four gigabytes of memory. Gavin's going back into the portal and he's going to go into servers. He's going to select modify an existing virtual machine. And within here, he's going to select the support group because different support groups have different rights over what actions they can do against different budgets. He will then select the budget and then select the virtual machine from out of the CMDB. At the moment, uh, the record of where that TF file is not actually there in the CMDB, but that is due to be populated. So at the moment, he's entered it in manually. He's updating the CPUs and memory. Again, since this recording has been done, we have actually got this to be dynamically populated so people can update it automatically from presented field of values. As you can see, as previously with the import video, you've got a, the request raised. Ansible Tower is there sitting watching for that request to be raised. It's picked that up. And now it's able to action, start running through the process to be able to update the Terraform code to be able to make sure that that is then applied to the virtual machine in, v in VMware. So what it's going to do is it's going to pull the Git repo, it's going to update the TF file, and once it's done that, it's all it's going to plan it out and run all of our Sentinel checks, make sure it's all happy and meets the policies which have been set out. Okay. And the policy check start. And now it's applying those changes to that virtual machine. So it's now updating those virtual machines. This is because of the fact that these are hot add enabled. And as you can see, the video the CPUs are now four and the memory is now eight and it's got an extra disk as well. And now it's going back to the CMDB to make sure that the records are up to date with the correct information. In real time, the change has been made, it's updating it straight away. Doesn't have to wait for a scanner to go along and detect that a change has happened some day in the month it's automatically done so that the cmdb is updated in real time with the changes that are happening and as you can see now this one says eight gigabytes of ram four cpus as well and the combined disk space is 70 now rather than 50 and the request again is closed complete. So that's a quick tour through the work that we've been doing over the past 10 months. Um, a lot more is in the pipe, pipeline for us to be able to get more out of Terraform um, and Terraform Enterprise itself. We're working very closely with our HashiCorp um, account team as well to be able to drive this on further. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to the team that I work with across the world, so in, in India, in Denver, in the, in the rest of America, and also within the UK, and especially the account team that I've been working with, with HashiCorp. Thank you very much.